we have the official set 4.5 gameplay overview just released like an hour ago so let's just get right into it if you guys caught my last video two weeks ago pretty much everything from the leak came true so let's just get into what exactly is going on and keep in mind the public beta environment is coming out tomorrow or wednesday i forget which but I'm sure we'll get more details here. And this set goes live, I think, late in January. I think on the 20th or something like that. So let's just get right into the patch. Uh, the Festival of, of Beast is almost here. This is the mid-set update. We already know that. Uh, leaving the party out with the old, in with the new. So for the mid-set update, they always take out some champions, take out some synergies, and then add new ones. So this time around, they're taking out Moonlight. So that's Lissandra, Silas, and Aphelios. Note that Diana is a Moonlight and is staying in this set, but she's going to have a new trait instead of Moonlight. Dusk is gone, so Vayne, Thresh, Riven, Cassiopeia, Lilia. I'm actually kind of sad about this because Dusk was a really strong synergy, and they're all pretty cool champions. Like, Vayne we already had before, but Thresh was pretty cool. There are some tank Thresh builds early on in set 4, which were kind of fun to watch. Riven's really cool, as always. Cassiopeia, big AoE stun, and Lilia, of course, with the sleep mechanic. No one else really had anything quite like that. Um, but they're bringing in Dragon Soul, I guess, instead of this. And Dragon Soul's going to be really cool. We'll get into that later. Hunter is gone, Aphelios, Warwick, and Ash. So Hunters were pretty dominant for most of the set. Uh, I think the other Hunter that's staying is Kindred. Uh, Dazzler, when Sharpshooters and Hunters were running amok, who did you turn to but the Glamorous Dazzlers? Yeah, these guys are gone. Dazzler's way too hard to balance, and they're either the best in the game or the worst in the game, depending on who's playing attack damage comps. So Lissandra, Lux, Ezreal, all gone. I'm going to miss Ezreal the most. He was probably one of my favorite legendaries of the set. He's probably my favorite League of Legends champion. But yeah, he's going to be gone now. Uh, Shade, Evelyn, and Kane are gone, so Zed stays. Uh, and then we have a few additional units who are leaving but don't fall into the remove traits, and that's Nami, Ekarim, Jinx, Xin Zhao, Jin, and Ari. So they're taking out two sharpshooters. Uh, Xin Zhao just never worked ever. Ari is a little oppressive. Uh, Hecarim, he just never really had his own unique identity, I feel like. Uh, like, he's supposed to be a carry, but at a 2 cost, he wasn't quite strong enough as a tank. Nami was just annoying to deal with because you did Luden spam, but I wonder who's going to build Ludens nowadays if Nami's not in the game. Uh, they might be removing that item or something like that. So Diana is Moonlight Assassin, is going to be changed to Spirit Assassin. So Spirit, we already know, that's the one that gives attack speed after a spell cast. Um, and she's going to use a different skin too, so that's going to be pretty cool. Zed is going to be a ninja slayer, so he now also has a passive ability where he jumps to the back line to replace the old shade passive, and it does not include the aggro drop part. So he is a lot vulnerable now. Interesting. So now Zed has like innately gets a jump, and he's a slayer, which we'll find out what that is in just a moment. Kindred is going to be changed into Spirit Executioner, so Executioner Hunter kind of similar. They both do bonus damage against like low target units. Hunter, they like auto aim them, and Executioner, I think you just have to be attacking them. Um, but we'll talk more about it in a moment. So Kindred uh, is still the same strong three cost carry apparently. So hopefully that's going to be true because Kindred with the blue buff, it's just really fun to watch. Morgana is being changed into an Enlightened Dazzler, into Enlightened Siphoner, so Siphoner is the one that kind of heals based on damage dealt. Um, the built-in healing on her spell has been removed to be replaced with a 40% attack damage reduction effect. Uh, that's very interesting. So she's going to still be a Dazzler, in a way, but she automatically gets it now. That actually seems really strong. I'd much rather have a AD reduction than a healing on her spell, so I think she just got stronger after this. Uh, what's being added? So Dragon Soul. They're adding in 7 new traits and 20 champions. So Dragon Soul, this trait is the big vertical in Festival of Beasts. It is a 369 uh, piece trait, so you could go quite deep. And they also have a spatula item called Spirit of the Dragon. I'm guessing this one's being made with the needlessly large rod because Dusk is being gone. But we get Brand, Tristana, Brahm, Shivana, Olaf, Aurelian Soul, and Swain. And this is what the sample comp looks like. They have six Dragon Soul, three Mages, two Vanguard, two Siphoner. Uh, do they say what the champions do? Not really, but Aurelian Soul is a powerful caster if he gets a second cast stop. Activating three Mage to make him a strong carry is a great way to play the comp. Okay, so it's looking like a Soul's old ultimate where he just zaps a big line in the middle of the field, which is very, very powerful. I actually love that version of a Soul more than the legendary one. Um, but we don't get much insight into what the other champions do. If we had to guess, though, Shivana and Brahm are probably going to be the same from set 1. Same for Tristana. Uh, Brand, we've never seen Brand at a 1 cost. 
and then Olaf probably going to be the same from set two, and then Swain probably going to be the same from set one. Uh, Swain was broken in set one, but maybe with a larger map, since set one was a three-row map instead of a four-row map, it's going to be a little different, but we'll get to see that in just a couple of days on the PvE. So Fabled, this trait is a three-piece synergy with exactly three champions in it, so you'll either need all three champs or a Fabled chosen, and each Fabled champions gain an additional unique effect that powers up their ability when the trait is active, and for this, champions are Nautilus, Nico and Cho'Gath. I wonder what they're going to do as a bonus. I just realized, I didn't read to you guys what Dragon Soul is actually going to do. Um, the trait empowers your champions with a powerful dragon buff that grants stats and powerful dragon breath attack. So I think after a bit of time, they do like some sort of dragon attack, which deals magic damage. So going into the Fabled comp, we have like a four Mystic, three Fabled, Blacksmith, and four Vanguard comp. So kind of like a stall comp that we saw from before. So Ari might be gone, but with the introduction of Nico, brings in a new way to play the Vanguard Mystic comp. Uh, Nico can do lots of damage with Fabled, and Nautilus with four Vanguard, four Mystic adds a lot of tankiness. Orn is a great addition because of his powerful artifact items. I've heard that Orn is going to be weak as a champion but his items are going to be super good so i'm guessing the longer you have him on the board the more powerful your opponents are going to be i was just checking here quickly to see if they have any of the artifact items visible so i'm really curious to see what these artifact items are and like how powerful they actually are so siphoner is a two four piece trade which is all about providing sustain for your team so when the trade is active your whole team gets some healing via damage done but siphoners get a much larger amount so we talked about this before where uh, it's kind of like the Celestial trait back in set 3, where you have some Celestial, they give healing to your whole team. But the Siphoners themselves, they get to heal a lot more, so it's kind of like the Dust Synergy in terms of how it scales, where the Siphoner units are going to be healing even more than what they normally give to your whole team. So this is going to be Nasus, Vladimir, Morgana, and Swain. Uh, I'm I'm just really excited to play Swain. I'm not too sure about you guys. Uh, Vladimir, we haven't seen at two cost, so I wonder what his ability is going to be. And then Nasus, we've seen him at one cost before. He kind of just uses his ultimate. Slayer trait is going to be a 2-4-6 synergy with five champions in it, so you'll need Chosen to hit six. Does this one get a spatula? I don't think so. So the lower a Slayer's health is, the more life sealed they get, allowing them to recover from their wounds, and the lower a Slayer's target is, the more damage they deal to them, allowing them to destroy wounded targets. So it's going to be really snowball -y fights. You'll probably see insane comebacks with these champions, and of course, yeah, Olaf is going to be one of these... One of these champions as a slayer so he is a dragon blood slayer we have darius tier 3 fortune i wonder what ability he's gonna have is he gonna have his old ability where he dunked on people or is he gonna have maybe his spin ability not really too sure because before he was a two cost now he's a three cost so we'll just have to wait and see zed's gonna be really powerful i'm guessing from this trindamir we just have to see what his ultimate is i'm not really too sure if it's his undying rage where he doesn't die for a certain amount of time or if it's gonna be something else and samira she looks really cool like if you guys saw a video of her recently she's doing like all types of nasty stuff so i'd be willing to say even that she's the champion that we're most looking forward to this set uh, so we have a sample comp here four slayer three fortune three dragon slayer two siphoner two vanguard one ninja we got lots of tanks up front and then we have the crit olaf with rfc here so that's kind of funny to see um, but let's go down a little bit to the next one, Executioner. Executioner is a 2-3-4 trade, so it's kind of like the Hunter one that we saw from before. And they're a great set of units to pivot into when you need to dish out extra damage. Let's see what they do. But it says, those who played Galaxies will notice a striking similarity to Valkyries, although this time as a trade and with deeper and more flexible breakpoints. So Valkyries, if you guys didn't know before, I think they did critical strike damage versus people below a certain percent of health. I think it was around 40%. So once they're below 40%, you just crit every turn, or it was bonus damage, I kind of forget now. Um, but it's really good. Kale was very dominant in that. Joining Kale, we have Kindred, who's being changed from Hunter, and we have Zaya now as a tier 4. I'm really excited to see what Zaya's ultimate is at tier 4, because we've only seen one cost Zaya. She was a good unit and like a good carry, but it was kind of boring, it just kind of increased her attack speed. I wonder what they're going to do for this one. Maybe she throws out feathers and then calls them back, that's what I would have to guess. Uh, but we'll have to see. We'll see in a couple days. Um, and again, guys, I'm going to be playing a lot of PBE, so I'll be uploading those games to my channel. So if you guys do want to not miss out on that, go ahead, subscribe below if you guys haven't already. Uh, but let's get into the new Tier 5 Champions. 
Uh, so we have Orn and Samira. Orn's going to be pretty cool, again, because of the items, but I think Samira is really the one that you want to look after, and I guess these are the ones where they're going to be spilling their abilities. So Orn summons an elemental from behind the furthest enemy to travel towards him, knocking up and stunning enemies hit for 1.5, 2, and 15 seconds at 3-star and dealing a lot of damage uh, at level 3. That's a little damage at level one and two so i guess it's not that much damage i i misspoke i, I saw the four thousand, and then i was like it's dealing a lot but then i forgot you're never gonna get a three star orn so if the elemental runs into orn he headbutts it redirecting it towards another distant enemy Ooh, that's pretty interesting because i wonder how often orn moves around where he'll miss the the ram the elemental that he summons in, it would be interesting to see. So how does he work? With solid all-around base stats, Orn serves as a frontliner for comps that need one, and at the call of the Forge God, he brings much-needed utility to the fight. And his true power comes from his unique trait, Blacksmith. After participating in combat, Orn begins crafting an artifact. The higher his star level, the faster he'll craft these powerful items. And once complete, the items will appear, and you'll be able to equip it on any ally champion with an open slot. Who doesn't have an artifact equipped okay so interesting they're not bonus items they are okay they're completely new items and they are actually giving us what they are so rocket propelled fist 15 mana 25 armor 200 health that's a lot of stats normally you only get two of these stats and at the start of combat the wearer pulls the furthest enemies into enemy range stunning them for 1.5 seconds oh it's actually blitzcrank yeah this is kind of cool um, allies within range will prioritize attacking that enemy so this is just blitzcrank if you guys played the previous sets and next one's Muramana. After the wearer casts their spell the first time each combat, they restore 100 mana. This is like... Wow. Of course it's going to be random, so you can't quite plan around it. But I could see getting an early Orn, getting an early item, and then trying to decide which legendary to go into later. So you don't just play like random legendaries. You have to like choose which one you get based on the items you have, I'm guessing. Uh, we have Trinity Force, which is 33 of every possible stat other than health. Tons of damage and tons of everything. Okay, interesting for that one. Uh, okay, so they're just three items. Oh, example artifacts. So they're probably even more than this. So they're just giving us like a tease of uh, what's to come. I'm really scared about Muramana. This one seems the strongest, but we'll see uh, what happens there. Because you just get two spell casts really quickly or really quickly consecutively. So I'm sure on some champions this is going to be completely devastating. Blitzcrank one is probably the weakest of these in my opinion. Um, assuming that Trinity Force does a little more than what they say here, which they kind of hint at. Uh, so Samira, Daredevil, Slayer, Sharpshooter. So her ability is that she dashes towards the largest group of enemies, gaining 100% dodge, becoming unstoppable, and firing out a lot of shots at random nearby enemies over two seconds. This is a lot of shots over two seconds. I thought this was damage at first, but it's, it's shots. That's a lot of attack speed. Hmm. All right. How do they work? Samira is one of the capstone physical damage dealers of any composition running slayers or sharpshooter or anyone lucky enough to snag her early and throw some AD items on. So I'm glad that they added a legendary that uses attack damage items. This was one of the uh, cons, I can't think of a better word, of set four where all the attack damage carries, Talon, Ash, and who was the last one? Jin. They were all at 4 cost, but now they finally added one at 5 cost, so now in the late game you have someone to put your attack damage items on. And let's look at Daredevil. Sidmira doesn't have mana, instead relying on her combo system. After every other basic attack, she'll flip towards a new target, gain a short duration shield, and fire twice, increasing her combo rating in the process. Once she reaches S rank, she'll pop off in a hail of bullets, mowing down anyone unfortunate enough to stand within her sights. I don't really know what this means. So I'm just going to wait to play this in like a couple days and then we'll find out what she does then. If someone does know and can explain in like simpler English, like let me know down in the comments below. Uh, filling out the roster, we have Rakan and Sivir. Rakan's Elderwood Keeper and Sivir's Cultist Sharpshooter. Sivir's probably going to be the same from before because Sharpshooter, she gets a ricochet. Rakan, not too sure if he's going to be the same two cost where he has the AoE CC ability. Uh, we'll have to see there, because they changed this ability a few times during set 3. So let's look into the system changes. So for this one, I, I think we're just going to have to read the whole thing, because it's, some of these things are very specific. So in addition to all this, we got one more th new thing coming to TFT this time around. Because it's the Festival of Beasts, we felt everyone deserves a present. Oh, nice. 
So during the game, at a certain point, every player will receive a lucky lantern. Oh no. All eight players will receive their lucky lantern at the same time. Okay, that's good. I thought it'd be at different times. Um, and the contents are the same for each player, but what's inside is different every game. The contents can include things you are already familiar with, like gold, Nico's help, item components, and even force and natures, but there can also be some brand new things inside that are new to TFT. Let's go over a couple of them. Okay, I was scared when I read the first sentence, but the second one makes it a little more manageable. Uh, well, we'll see how this goes. So shop reroller, use this on a champion, and your shop will reroll once free of charge and only include champions of the same traits. I thought this, for a moment they scared me, I thought it'd be the same champion in the entire shop and that was gonna scare the crap out of me, but it's just same traits. For example, if you use this item on cannon, only ninja skin keepers will appear in the shop. This one's really cool and it's balanced because everyone gets the same one instead of like, say shop reroller was really good or really bad and like one person gets a shop reroll and another person gets like uh, 10 gold or whatever, like I'm glad that they're not doing it that way. I'm glad that everyone's getting the same one. Um, but other than that, it follows the normal shop rules for things like percent chances to see each cost. And because we know you'll ask, in the incredible, unlikely event that all the champs are somehow out of the pool, and it is possible for this item to fail and just roll other champs. Okay, uh, that one's pretty cool. There's always times where like we just need one more of the synergy, so this one will be helpful for that. Item remover, use this on a champion and all the items will pop off of them and return to your bench. This one's kind of cool. I think this one is weaker than the shop reroller, but it's pretty cool. Then again, we haven't played around having an item remover, so maybe we can kind of play around it now, though it's kind of like a one in five chance, maybe even less than that, because you could get like items and gold. So it's like really rare, so we still won't play around it. So maybe it's not gonna be that great, uh, but it sounds cool um, to move items from one champ to another. Item reroller is use this on a champion and not only will the items pop off a champion, but they will also reroll into a random similar item. So if you have a cloak you don't need, use this to reroll it into a different component. This also works on full items, but that's a really risky play. Spatulas and spatula items cannot be rerolled. Very interesting. This one's probably the cooler one than item remover in my opinion. Uh, last one's training dummy. This one gives you a placeable training dummy that kind of works like a Zeer Soldier's. You can place it anywhere and add some HP to eat up attacks. This one's kind of cool though, and you can't bench or sell it. I really like training dummy. That's gonna add a lot of skill cap to the game, in my opinion, because positioning's one of those things that you can't prepare for before the game. Each fight is so different, and like depending on the items, compositions, and all that, like each unit placement is very, very precise. So the person who's like the expert manipulator is going to make the most use of this training dummy obviously um i just said it out loud and it sounds really redundant but like it's really true though it's like it's gonna allow people to show their skill a lot more than they had before but yeah that's pretty much it for what we see here um i'm looking forward to samira not too quite sure what she does because i can't comprehend what they wrote quite yet in my mind um, I'm excited for the Dragon Slayer people because I really like Shivana, so I want to play some Shivana carry. Uh, let's see if three cost carries are back because in previous sets like set one and set two, you could actually use a three cost carry throughout the entirety of the game, but you couldn't say the same in set three and four without getting them three star. But I'll have to think of how that works with Chosen. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this preview in the comments. Obviously, they're going to be releasing the PBE very soon. We're going to be playing on it. I might do some in-house games on my Discord at discord.gg slash bunnymuffin. So if you guys want to check that out, go ahead and join there. Um, if you guys are new, subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you guys enjoyed what you see. And last but not least, check out the video description below to find my Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. But I'll see you guys very soon. I know I haven't been active lately. I've been on vacation, but now that set 4.5 is coming here, I'm going to be releasing a lot more videos, hopefully. So go ahead, check that out, and I'll see you guys in a bit.